Today we're canning spiced red cabbage for the win. It is so delicious. Hey guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And today, oh, I'm super excited. I am going to be cutting up cabbage to make a spiced red cabbage slaw, if you will. So and this is a canning recipe. We're gonna be canning out of the bowl. This is a ball recipe. There's a, the smaller version of this recipe because this one calls for 12 pounds of cabbage. I don't have that. Right here, this is six and a half pounds. I'm gonna, by the time you core it and everything, it'll probably be six pounds, which is perfect for this recipe. Um, I want to change a couple of, th there's a couple of things that are a little bit different in here than the smaller version of the recipe, but basically that is the recipe. And it comes out of this book um, on page 330. So safe canning practices, it's a two day process. So today, what? I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get moving. So I literally, I'm gonna get into the cabbage. This was $1.12 a pound. You know, I remember when you used to be able to get red cabbage for, you know, 80, 80 cents a pound and green cabbage was, you know, anywhere from 39 to 49 cents a pound, but those days are gone. Gosh, I do have some out in the garden growing and this is why I wanna see if I like this, that's what I'm gonna be doing with my cabbage in the garden. So take those outside leaves off, come on in and let me show you what's going on. Let's bring you down up close and personal. So literally take those outside. I've already washed these, but go ahead and get, Get those outside leaves. I usually take a lot of this stuff off in the store so I don't have to pay for it. I take any of the really icky leaves off right in the grocery store. And just like people shuck the corn right in the grocery store, well that, well, I typically don't do that because corn is not by the pound. But, and then I'm going to literally cut it in half. Ooh, and look, look at what a beautiful, tight, woven cabbage that is. That is super tight. That's what you want. And then I'm gonna cut it in quarters. And this is, from what everybody says, this is a wonderful recipe. And I'll be using this on pulled pork. I'm gonna cut that core out. So my core is gone. Um, pulled pork, bratwurst, burgers, uh, fish tacos, you name it. And I plan on using it. I am a cabbage fanatic anyway. So now that I've got the core out, I'm going to go ahead and start um, just really as thin as I can get. If you want to use a mandolin, you can. But I want them, I want them pretty thin. And I don't want it hard to get in and out of the jar, all that. So that's what I'll be doing is manhandling some cabbage, right? If I feel like I've got one that's too thick, because I don't really like chopped um, cabbage pickled. I've had it and it's, I don't like things chopped chunky like that. I don't know why. I want this like a slaw, like a really nice slaw. So, okay. Can you see how I'm doing it? As thin as possible. Of course, now I'm at an awkward angle. But you get the picture. So we're gonna, and it's funny, I gave away my Tupperware mandolin. I gave it away too soon. <laughs> so you don't want the strips too long or it's hard, like I said, to get out of the jars, I would imagine, and, and all those things. So in my bowl, this is gonna go. And this is going to be salted down and uh, left to sit uh, for 24 hours. So tomorrow I will be canning this in the new steam can. So there you go. Let me get this all choppy choppy. And I'll, I'll bring it back, I'll show you how much that is. This is a, a really big stainless bowl. It's got measurements on it, let's see. Uh, yeah, six quarts. So we'll see how much we okay, get. Okay guys, I got the two cabbage. This is a lot of cabbage. Uh, it calls for six pounds. So I 
should have layered and gotten the salt layering, but um, it calls for a quarter cup. So I'm gonna do half. I'm gonna move this into these containers, if that, if that makes sense to you. So my board still has some cabbage, right? Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get messy again. And it stains your hands. My, my, I washed my hands and they're still purple. So it's okay. Um, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt as I go, right? As I go, as I go. I don't think I need this knife. Yeah. Yeah, see? On the counter. In fact, I just wiped the counter down with a bleach wash, so I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna put that in my food. We'll take this over and get it out of the way. And I'll, I'll have to bleach my, uh, my, Oh my gosh. Okay, all right. So that being said, here we go. Let's get some cabbage in here. And it says to layer and salt. So I may have three containers on. Oh, okay. And just get it all mixed in really good. And That way, you know that it's gonna do its job. It is gonna break down. And these are four quart containers. So I could leave the rest in this bowl, but I kind of feel like I want. And pickling canning and I know everybody's probably cringing this a lot of salt, but it's it's okay because it helps pull the moisture out. It'll keep the vegetables crispy and crunchy. And then um, when we go to eat it after it's been canned, it's still crispy. It's still crunchy. It's still got that fresh taste from last fall. And it's the middle of winter. And in my case, it'll be the middle of fall <laughs> or the middle of summer. I want this for summer barbecue. Oh, okay. So you get the picture. I am throwing it down. I didn't even need this glove. But, um, in fact, I'm gonna take this glove off. Okay. So, let me get this worked a little bit more. A little bit more salt. Work it in layers. And then I think I can just do the other um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fill this container. I'm gonna put the lid on this. And I've got it packed pretty good. And if you use a little bit more salt than the recipe calls for, you're gonna be rinsing it. So don't get, don't get all freaked out. There's too much salt because you're not gonna have the salt in there in the mix. It is going to be so good. And I'm just telling you, I love cabbage. Mm. Just like that. Okay. Let's put a lid on. And we're going to get in this bowl. Now there's uh, plenty of room to move this around. So I'm going to get some salt down in here. Pour the rest of my measure. And get to sprinkling. And get to tossing it. Okay, so you really, you're just tossing it around, making sure everybody's got some salt on them. And I will, I'll have room out in the garage refrigerator for both of these. Actually, I am gonna dirty this. I wasn't going to, but this was easy to mix up in here. It'll store easier in the fridge out there. Cause I'm gonna leave this alone until tomorrow afternoon. And then I'm gonna come back. And we're gonna be canning, canning red pickled cabbage. I can't wait. Are you excited? I'm super excited. Yeah, it all fit. What the heck? It's already started to kind of let go of some stuff. So that's good. And if you have green and red cabbage, you can mix it. 
Know though that the purple is probably gonna make your green cabbage a little bit on the pink side. Okay, I am happy now. I'm gonna wash everything up and I'll see you back here tomorrow, like in a minute. Okay, so it is the next day. This sat in the fridge for 24 hours. Now I've gotta get this out of here. Oh, and it slumped, it lost a good port. This was up to here. The other one was up to the top. So each one of them lost about a quart of that. So I am going to rinse this in cold water and then it says to lay it out and over paper towel line, baking dishes, and let it dry for six hours. So we're still moving. This is a long process, but I'm hoping it's worth it. So, okay, come along. We'll get this rinsed off and get it lay out. Set it out on the trays. I'll be back in six hours. Okay, so according to the recipe, you need a bouquet. So in here is, and I'll I'll leave a, a link to the ball book, and it is on page 330. And basically this is that recipe cut in half. So um, you've got two tablespoons of uh, allspice all berry ground, I did not have ground nutmeg. I'm just gonna use the whole nutmeg. You could use mace or nutmeg. It calls for a quarter cup, but I wasn't gonna put it in at all. Um, I've got two tablespoons of peppercorns, three big uh, cinnamon sticks. I'm not quite doubling the brine, but that's that's basically it. And is that, is that all that's in here? Oh, celery seed. So you want two tablespoons of celery seed. The mustard seeds and the brown sugar are gonna go in the brine, but I am going to pull up all the edges here and make myself a little makeshift because I do not have any tea bags or any of that. This is gonna go right down just like this into my, um, probably should could have cut some of that fabric off but it barely made it. So this is gonna be in the, in the, um, the brine. So in the brine, you're gonna need uh, for a double recipe. Let's see, what does it say for the vinegar? Eight cups, well, obviously I need four. At least four, I'm gonna make extra brine, so we'll probably do six. Let, let's get. Let's see what we got. And this is red wine vinegar. You could, I would imagine, as long as it's 5% acidity, change the vinegar out anywhere you want, but this is gonna add a lot of flavor. I love red wine vinegar. So that's two, and we'll give it four. It's not the cheapest vinegar on the market, that's for sure. Four, a little bit more. There's about four and a half. Mm. I'm gonna to have to add some more. I want six cups, just because I'm making extra brine. And if I don't use all the brine for this, I can put that brine in the fridge and do some quick pickles too. So let me grab the other vinegar and I'll be right back. I forgot, there's whole cloves in here too. So some some recipes had it, some didn't, but I did. So I've got six cups, roughly six cups of the red wine vinegar. And I want the mustard seeds. Mm. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add, I want mustard seeds in every single jar. So, there you go. Have you ever thought of taking your seeds like this, like sprouting seeds? Have you ever thought of planting them in your garden? Well, guess what? I just did. I've got an experiment going. I'll bring you guys along for it. Okay, so there's my brine. Very vinegary, very potent, and now it's going to have, oh, I need sugar, brown sugar. And I will be using four jars lids today. Um, there's a link down below with a discount code. Of, if you put Linda's Pantry in there, you'll get 10% off your complete order. And Okay, now half cup. I'm gonna do <clears throat> three fourths of a cup of lightly packed brown sugar. 
So it does add a little bit of sweetness, but it's not gonna be overly sweet. So this gets brought up to a boil. I'm gonna get it, just get your bag in there. Bring that up to a boil and it is going to simmer on a low boil for five minutes. And I need to get my jars packed because this goes into hot jars. It's still got a little bit of moisture on it, but I'm gonna be putting the brine in there. So it's gonna get wet anyway. <laughs> mm. And it is delicious. You can still taste a little salt on there. So that's why there's no salt in here. All right, I'll take it to the store. Okay, so it's time to pack cabbage. And I'm just gonna pull this over and probably make a mess, but whatever. Anyways, I'm gonna be packing it into the jars. And you probably could do without a funnel. I did um, my, when you're packing it, um, it doesn't say loose or tight, it just packs, pack the cabbage into the jars. So I'm, I'm gonna pack it. And then you've got a half an inch of headspace for the liquid. So I'm super excited about this. Okay, I did put an eighth of a teaspoon of pickle crisp in the bottom of each jar. These jars are hot. They just came out of the steam canner. So I'm just gonna pack all the jars first and We'll go from there and we'll be debubbling, so never fear on that, man. And it actually stained my cutting board, which I'm a little upset about because it's a new cutting board. I think eventually it'll come off of there, but there's that pink hue in the center of the cutting board from yesterday. So, okay, a little bit more in here. Yeah, it's gonna be great. A little bit more in here. And I'm using wide mouth to start if I run out of wide mouth jars because I only have five available to me. If I run out, well, then I'm going to use a regular mouth. Okay. Let's get these. And these are going to, oh my gosh, this is going to make way more than I thought. So yeah, I will be doing regular mouth. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Let me get all my jars filled and I will, I'll be back. Okay, it is time to do the brine. I packed these in pretty good because it was telling me how many jars I was gonna need and yeah. Um. I'm glad I made extra brine because I'm probably gonna end up with 10. Uh, my canner, I'm using my new steam canner. It only holds eight. So you're gonna get in here and deep bubble. Make sure you've got a half an inch of headspace in there. Okay. And I can use some more brine in that one. Okay, so let's see. And let me just tell you, it is not without being messy. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, so let's get a little more brine in there. To a half inch. Um, and it is beautiful. Deep bubble. You're gonna go around the edges, get in there. Okay. And that is it. Wipe the rim of that jar. I could use a little bit more. So I'm gonna have to wipe it again. Half inch. Okay. If you're unsure, take your debubbling tool and this is a half inch. And actually it could use a little bit more. Whew. Sorry about that. Now it's touching and that's exactly what you want. It touching the liquid. Okay. Wipe that rim. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna get a lid and this is a wide mouth. Four jars. We'll get that. And it's just fingertip tight. Look how pretty that is. I'm super excited. So we'll get this over to the canner and we will rinse and repeat every one. So all of the jars got it. 
eighth of a teaspoon of um, my mouth's watering, it smells so good, uh, of pickle crisp. And I'm confident that, yes, I am confident that uh, they're gonna stay crispy. Okay, wipe the rim and in she goes. There we go. And she goes to the canner. A little bit more. Like it's more, it's it, half an inch is, is hard to visualize. I'm so used to doing um, one inch headspace. You tend to lean towards the one inch and you really want a half inch. So. What a nice gift this would make. How pretty is that? And with those mustard seeds in there, mmm. Okay, in the canner. I'll be back when we're lo when we're closing so it up. So I've got six jars on here. Aren't they beautiful? Um, six jars. I'm bringing the canner up to heat, and literally this is. It's got a little dial on top. You figure out where your zone is because I'm under a thousand feet, and the lid. According to a popular belief, does not sit down, down on there perfectly. It just sits loosely, okay? So, um, I thought maybe it was broken. I have to make another batch of brine. I did six cups, and that literally did not touch all of it. So, and I've got two more jars I need to pack. So, I'm going to make one more batch of brine, and... Um, yeah, at least I still have that bouquet and I can reuse it because not all the not all the good stuff's gone from it. So I'll make another brine. So when that canner gets up in the green zone, then I will start my timing. It's going to go for 20 minutes, 20 minutes. And I am going to be, um, after 20 minutes, you'll take, turn the heat off, take the lid off and let it sit for five minutes and then take the jars and set them aside. But literally, I have maybe a half a cup of brine left. That's kind of disappointing. I don't like it when recipes do that. And it I'm sure it has to do with how tightly or not tightly you pack your cabbage. But I packed it in there pretty tight. I want a lot of cabbage per pint jar. So there's that. Darn it. All right. I'll be back. Okay, so that went for um, 20 minutes once it came up. And it comes up pretty fast. How beautiful is this? Oh my gosh. It is so gorgeous. It is like a magenta purple. Ugh, it's so pretty. I'm super excited about that. And even with a um, half an inch of headspace, there was a little bit of siphoning. I, I've got purple, I've got pinky purple juice. So I don't know. If that's normal, if you've made this, uh, let me know. This is my first go round with this pickled cabbage canning it. So I'm, I'm super excited. But now I've got to get round two in here. But can you see that? A little bit of something, something there. I know it won't hurt anything, but we're just gonna, we're gonna get round two in the steam canner and make sure it's got plenty of water for the next batch. Okay guys, so the rest of the jars are out of the canner. These first ones, wait, it was these. <laughs> They've all sealed. That one is still not sealed. It just came out of the canner though. It'll seal. It, it, 10 pints of this beautiful spiced cabbage will be delicious. And I'm saving the rest of that brine. I'm actually gonna use that in a hot sour soup. Um, either a hot sour soup or a sweet and sour stir fry because it's delicious. I don't want to waste it. So if you have excess cabbage this summer, I highly recommend this. This is the prettiest canning project you could ever do and I can't wait. It's going to be delicious. Some people let this sit for a few weeks, but I'm not going to. 
it that's that flavor is going to be infused in there i love cabbage and i want to make sure that i get to use it this week so i'll be using it no problem all right guys i can't wait to see you next time please if you've done this leave us a comment if you did anything different let me know I literally weighed that cabbage. It was six pounds of cabbage and I got the amount that a 12 pound recipe would have given me. So, say lovey. I will leave a link to the, um, this is called a fruit saver um, steam canner with the gauge on here. I will leave a link for you to get it. it it's very reasonable. It's less water, even though I never waste the water in my water bath canner. I always um, use the water to water plants. So, and even in this, I'll use the water to water plants. Um, it's less water, it's not heavy, you can store it easily, and you don't, you don't have some big, heavy, cumbersome item to lug around when you get ready to can. So I'll be doing some more canning tomorrow, so it's not even gonna get put away. I'm gonna wash it up and get it ready for tomorrow. All right, what's on tomorrow's menu? Mmm, salsa. All right, <laughs> I can't wait. I'll bring you along when I open the jar and we do a taste test. Okay, all right, mm -hmm. bye. So stay tuned for the next video because I do a taste test for you. And let me just tell you, mm, well, I'll let you see for yourself.